Hi everyone, it's Danny. Alrighty, so today we're gonna discuss about how external factors influence the blooms of an orchid. Of course, good care, watering, fertilizing and uh, so on play a major role as well, but uh, there are other things that we cannot necessarily control that affect um, how the orchid will bloom, how the blooms will look like and so on. Now the main idea is that orchids which prefer colder temperatures will do generally better in colder temperatures and vice versa. But I'm just going to give you some examples that I noticed with my orchids, how they behaved in certain environments, certain conditions and so on, so maybe you will know what to expect from your orchid or if you notice something with the blooms of your orchid to not panic and actually know the reason. Let's start with the light factor. Usually orchids which prefer bright light such as Calia orchids and this Vanda orchid that I have here and Vandas in general will display paler blooms in conditions of low light or lower light. I have an example here with my Rincoridas Bangkok Sunset. Now the flowers are really really pretty but if you notice on the corner of the screen here this orchid managed to bloom even more beautiful than this in the summertime. The colors were more intense, I had quite a lot more red and orange and a violet and so on. And this is due to the light factor. Vanda orchids in general, um, in the winter time if they bloom, sometimes they might get uh, paler flowers. It's not the case with all Vanda orchids. But it sometimes happens with the orchids that have very very bright colors and although it doesn't mean that the flowers are not um, okay and healthy and fragrant and so on, um, the pale color can be due to the lack of light. The lack of bright light can also influence the speed with which the buds actually open. Now in lower light conditions you will discover that buds develop and open much slower than in bright conditions. This is also coupled with low temperatures, but light plays an important factor here as well. And all orchids seem to be affected by this. It's pretty logical. Because of the low light, their metabolism is slowed down and buds will open slower because the whole orchid is slower in, um, in low light conditions. Of course, low light can actually affect the whole orchid into not blooming. It's the case with Calia orchids and Oncidium orchids and some orchids which do like bright light. Sometimes a non-flowering orchid uh, might be lacking strong light. If it's the type of orchid which likes strong light, the fact that it's not blooming at all can be caused by the lack of light, so you should up the light quantity. Now, if an orchid produces smaller flowers than usual, there could be a lot of things gone wrong with the orchid starting from its health and so on, but also light plays a major role as well. For the orchids that do prefer brighter light like Calia orchids, the lack of light can provoke smaller blooms than usual. Now the difference might not be very very noticeable, but if you notice that your orchid does produce smaller blooms and uh, you're dealing with a situation of overcast days, prolonged times without sun and so on, this can be uh, one of the reasons why your orchid is producing smaller flowers. Temperature can greatly affect the development of buds and flowers in general. For those orchids which really do not like cold temperatures, a lower than normal temperature for them could mean bud blast. Phalaenopsis orchids are especially prone to this. Out of all my orchids, I can say that Phalaenopsis orchids are the ones that lose their buds more than any other orchid that I have, more than my Miltoniopsis and so on, and usually this happens because of low temperatures. There are some Phalaenopsis hybrids, usually the very complex hybrids, which can actually uh, bloom in low temperatures as well, but some Phalaenopsis orchids can suffer from major bud blast uh, if they're the type of orchid which really do not like cool temperatures. Usually for Phalaenopsis orchids, if your temperature goes lower than 18 degrees Celsius, you might want to get it in the house because it's slightly too low. Lower than 18 degrees Celsius can mean bud blast, and I mean major bud blast. As I stated before, buds and uh, flowers open much slower in low temperatures. This is coupled with the light as well. But low temperatures mean that the orchid's metabolism is slowed down, Thus, the buds open slower and the flowers um, open slow as well. Now, the good thing with lower temperatures is that for some orchids, it can mean that the flowers last longer. Because the water is not evaporating so fast, the orchid is not uh, transpiring. I don't know if this is the word. Uh, it is not losing its uh, moisture from the leaves and flowers and so on that fast. So usually for Miltoniopsis, Nelly Eilers and some Oncidium orchids, lower temperatures 
can actually be beneficial and make the flowers last longer. And when I say lower temperatures, I don't mean cold temperatures, just on the low uh, spectrum of intermediate temperatures, let's say 20 degrees Celsius. On the other hand, high temperatures makes the metabolism of the orchid um, be faster. So the buds and flowers will open faster, but they can also um, shed much faster. And this is the case with Miltoniopsis orchids and their hybrids. But the other orchids can be affected as well. The only ones which are not really super affected by this, I discovered, are the Phalaenopsis orchids. They really do not like the cold temperatures, but the hot temperatures they can withstand pretty well if they're well watered. Also, there seems to be a difference in um, the way the blooms look like in some orchids regarding temperature. For example, the Nelly Eiler orchid and also Miltoniopsis orchids tend to have more vigorous and more colorful blooms during cold seasons rather than hot seasons. This is pretty normal because they do like colder temperatures in general and thus their flowers will look better in colder conditions as well. You can see on the screen here a difference. The Nelly Eiler, which is very very red, bloomed in a cold season, while the Nelly Eiler, which has dots, white dots on the flowers, bloomed in a warm season. So you can see a difference in how the flowers look like. Of course, this is not applicable to all orchids, but usually if the orchid that likes cooler temperatures blooms in a warmer season, the flowers will not look as good as in the cold temperature and of course vice versa. Low light conditions can also have a bad influence on an orchid's fragrance. Usually the brighter and sunnier it is, and I'm not referring here to direct sunlight, but the brighter the light is, the more an orchid will produce a fragrance. This is pretty logical because if an orchid senses that it's nice outside, it's not overcast and rainy, it is producing the fragrance to attract the pollinators. If it feels that it's a very rainy day, it kind of knows that pollinators will probably not be in abundance, they will not fly to pollinate flowers and feed themselves, so it does not release as much fragrance. So, low light conditions can affect an orchid's fragrance. It's not necessarily the case with everybody, but usually an orchid will, will release more fragrance, will smell more beautiful in uh, bright light conditions. Temperatures can also induce blooming to some orchids, and it's the case with the famous Phalaenopsis orchid, which is prompted by low temperatures to produce flower spikes, but also Dendrobium nobili orchids, some Selogenes, and also Dendrobium kingianums and their hybrids. And as a final idea, I discovered that Oncidium orchids and most Oncidium intergenerics handle external factors very, very well. Whether it's a high temperature or low temperature, low light or high light, if they get to bloom, the blooms will look really, really nice. Uh, the buds will not blast. I don't think I ever had bud blast on my Oncidium. Compared to my Phalaenopsis, which seem to do this every day, uh, but Oncidiums tend to uh, be very hardy when it comes to external factors. So overall, an Oncidium orchid will handle um, extreme factors much, much better than any other orchid that I have so far. Alrighty, so I hope you enjoyed this video and you found it useful. If you want to see more videos regarding orchids from me, don't forget to subscribe. You can leave me questions and suggestions in a comment below and I will try to answer you either with a video, either with a comment. And thank you again for watching. I will see you next time. Bye!